Welcome to Friday. Looks so pretty in the back with all of our pictures and things hung up. Kind of a snowy day out today, but that's okay. Okay, let's do a little practice on factoring, okay? Let's kind of review everything we've learned in class the last week or two. Okay, I want to factor this to solve it. And if the coefficient of a is a one, it's really easy. Okay, I'm gonna make up my two binomial terms. And I know you're looking at this Sharpie marker, like what is she thinking? But don't worry, there's a pencil or two close by. Um, for this term, I'm pretty confident in myself. So I have an x squared, so there's not really much negotiation there, x on both sides. Okay, now if the c term is negative, but the b term is positive, that means I'm going to have, well, it doesn't even make a difference if he's positive or not, but as soon as c is negative, I need a negative and a positive. Now on this one, I'm just gonna go in and put my positive and negative signs there because my coefficient of a is one, so it doesn't make a difference. Now I'm trying to see what's going to multiply to give me 32, but it's gonna wind up adding back to give me that positive four. And you may or may not wanna use a pencil here for this one. Actually, you probably may wanna use a pencil to seeing what's gonna give you the best results. Um, this one's pretty easy because I know if I try an eight, positive eight, and a negative four, uh, if I multiply that back, I wind up getting 8x, I get a negative 4x, and that gives me a positive 4x, so I know that I'm right there. So factoring this is easy, and then x plus 8 equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0, so therefore x equals negative 8, I'll add 4 to both sides here, and x equals 4, and those are going to be my two roots. My two zeros, they call them, because it's where the x zeros out. So at negative 8 and 4, and we don't know the vertex yet, but it's going to loop something like that, okay? So pretty easy. Now, if he's a prime number, and I think I will switch over to my pencil here, because I can make errors on these, um, he's still pretty easy, and I'm going to opt to factor it, even if it's a 3. Um, anything prime, I think, is pretty easy. I don't need the box method for that. So I know that I have to use 3x and x, and with the 14, I don't have too many options. I really only have a 14 and 1 or a 7 and 2. Now, I know he's negative, and I need a positive and negative sign, but I'm not ready right away to put them in. i got to think about this a little bit first because I need to get back to a positive 1, and it makes a difference of where I put everything here because of this 3 term. So I am going to try out, let's try out a positive 7 here and a negative 2 here because that will indeed give me negative 14. But let's see if I get a positive 1. Well, 7 times x is 7x. Negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x. And that's a 1x success. Yay. It's not an exact science. It's just kind of a trial and error. Now on this one, too bit my pencil sharpener is broken here. It's almost dead. Hmm. Okay, 3x plus 7 equals 0. Subtract 7 from both sides. 3x equals negative 7. I uh, divide both sides by 3, and x equals negative 7 thirds. No problem leaving him in the improper fraction. I think that's fine. You could change it into a mixed number if you wanted to. And the other one, x minus 2 equals 0. I add 2 to both sides, and x equals 2. So those are my two roots on that one. Now, on the last one, I have a pretty big coefficient here. I have 6. So on one like this, I probably won't opt to factoring it. I'll probably go to the box. Now, a review of the box method. Since he's a 6, I have quite a few options for my binomials. I can use a 6 and a 1 or a 2 and a 3, let alone if I had something huge like a 16. In the first box goes my 6x squared, and my, set, my bottom right box goes my negative 4. So a goes here, and c goes there. Now I proceed to multiply the a term by the c term, and I know I get negative 24. Um, don't worry about the negative sign right now, though. Now, for a trick, if you wanted to go into your calculator and see all the factors of 24, there's not too many, but 24 divided by x, and then I go to the table, 
and that will tell me all the factors I have at 24. And I'm trying to figure out what's going to multiply to give me a 24, what's going to add back to give me a 5. So um, you can look through and think about which choices you need. You're definitely going to need a negative and a positive, so you know you're really going to be subtracting to get that. So I know that I need a negative 8 and a positive 3, and that will multiply to give me 24, but add to give me, oh, there's the bell, add to give me a negative 5. Don't forget your x's. Then I just factor going up, and the greatest common factor of 3 and 6 is 3, and they also have an x. The greatest common factor of 8 and 4 is 4. Uh, once I put my negative sign here, and it doesn't make a difference if I put the 8x down here or the 8x up here. Once I know the two factors, they can go in either place, I'll get the same answer. So 3x minus 4. And the other one is going to factor into my greatest common factor of this is 2 and an x. Once I have a positive sign here, the positive sign stays. And since there's no factors of this, I leave a 1. So my factored equation becomes 2x plus 1 here. Now, if I go to solve this, I wind up with 3x minus 4 equals 0. So 3x equals 4. So that means x equals 4 thirds. And 2x plus 1 equals 0. So that means that 2x equals negative 1. So x equals negative 1 half. Oop. And those are your two factors. Okay, pretty easy. And don't forget, you can put these either place. Just don't forget to include your x's. And then whatever sign is in front of that is the sign that goes along.